Okay, next we're going to take a look at folders in Reaper. Now, folders can be used for submixing or as a bus, kind of like a container for our tracks. Let me show you. We have our project here kick, snare, hi hat, and acoustic guitars. Let's make a folder for all these tracks. Make a new track down here. Now, the order of the tracks really matter. We can't just make a folder down here. We have to put this track at the top. Then we go to the bottom right corner, right over here. It looks like a folder until we get closer. Then it turns into a plus. Just hit that. And all the rest of the tracks in our project move over a little bit. To the right, you can see it over here. So all these tracks are in this folder. So for organization purposes, the folder can control the child tracks. These tracks are considered child tracks. So if we hit mute, all the tracks in the folder get muted. If we hit solo, it does the same thing. And we can also control the volume. So if we play the track now, all the tracks are routed through the folder track. And we can change the level of all of them together with the fader. So all the child tracks are routed to the folder. And we could also use folders for adding effects to many different tracks. Let's say we wanted to add EQ to all these tracks. We wanted to put a filter on there. We don't want to have to do it on each one of these tracks. So by creating a folder and putting an EQ on that folder track, we'll right click and choose an EQ. Let's make a low pass, adjust the bandwidth. And now we have a filter for all the tracks that are in the folder. So we can add effects to all of them at the same time. But it's really great for organizing our session based on what's being played. Let's delete this, and let's make another folder just for the guitars. Make a track down here, bring it up, hit this again, and now this folder is just for our guitars. But right now this folder is for everything. So this controls everything, and this just controls the guitars. So we could solo this, and we just hear the guitars. But if we want to separate it, so just this does the drums, go down here to the track above the folder and hit that same button. That makes it a folder, but let's hit it again, and it pops it out so that this track is a folder for these two, and this track is a folder for these three, but they're separate from each other. So if we mute this one, it just mutes the drums, and this one, it's just for the guitars. But we can have folders within folders. So let's create another folder. Put this one on the top. Hit this button again. Now everything below it, from here down, is in this folder. So we have folders within folders. This controls everything. This controls the drums, and this controls the guitars. So folders can be within folders. And if we create two more tracks on the bottom here, right now, they're in this folder. But we could take them out by hitting this button right here, making this the last track in the folder. So if we click it, it pops these two out so they're no longer in this folder. So this is a great way of creating submixes for our tracks. Want to adjust the drums? Use this fader. Want to readjust the guitars? 
use this folder. And readjust both, we can use this fader. Now we could also use folders for organizing our track heights. Let's take a look at a more complicated project to see how that works. So now we have a more complicated project set up. We have our drum tracks in a folder, our bass tracks in a folder, some guitar tracks in a folder, vocals in a folder, and some effects returns in a folder. So we could use these for submixing our tracks, adjusting our drums on the whole, or the bass, or the guitars, but we could also use it for adjusting our track heights, and therefore organizing our project a lot easier. In our folder track, if you go to the upper right, right here, the little triangle, if we hit that once, all the tracks in that folder get minimized. See right here? We can still see their names, adjust the fader, and a bunch of other things like mute, sol, effects, but it's a lot smaller. So if we're not working on the drums at the time, we can make it smaller right from here. Or our bass, they're minimized, the guitar, the vocals, and our effects returns. Now we can see a lot more tracks at once. Now if we hit that triangle one more time, it hides the tracks almost completely. You can still see them, but you can't adjust anything on them. Again, it makes it easier to organize our tracks. Hide the bass ones, the guitars, the vocals, and the effects returns. And now right from here, in this one window, we can adjust all our submixes. Change the bass level, the guitar level, mute the effects returns, solo the vocals. So it's a lot quicker when you can see everything. And then if you want to edit something, go to the little triangle for the vocal, it opens to full size. We can see our vocals and our background vocals. Hit it again, they get minimized. And hit it one more time, they get hidden. So there's three positions for adjusting our track heights with folders. Now let's check it out with the mixer. If we open our mixer, we can see all folders and our tracks right here. And notice they're in the same order. Folder, child tracks, folder, child tracks, and so on. But if we want, we can change that. If we right click over here, there's some options. We can hide our folders by choosing this option here, not to show the folders. And now we won't see our folders in the mixer, only in the track control panel. Let's show them again. Now we can see them again. We can hide the tracks that are in folders, which are going to hide the child tracks. Now we only see the folders. Let's put that back. And the next option I want to show you, group folders to the left. If we choose this, all the folder tracks in our project show up over here. So again, it's great for submixing. We could adjust our drums, our bass, our guitars, vocals, and effects returns all together in one spot, having the child tracks over here. But it still looks the same in our track control panel. We still have to have our folders at the top of our child tracks. Now I should also mention there's one drawback to using folders. Let's open up the drums, minimize them. The one drawback of adjusting our volume here is if we use effect sends on these drums, those effect sends are going to stay constant even if we adjust this, because these tracks don't realize anything's being changed. So if we send this to a drum reverb and we adjust this level, the effect level for the reverb is going to stay the same. 
And we don't really want that. So there's two ways to get around that. One way is to put the effect track in the same folder. Take the reverb track, bring it up, and put it in the same folder, like this. So now the reverb for our drums is in the same folder. So if we adjust it here, the sends are going to stay the same, but the drum reverb return is going to be adjusted also. It's going to match. So that way it's going to work. But the problem with this method is that we can't use this reverb with any tracks but the drums. If we use it for vocals or guitar, adjusting it over here is going to change that balance. So we don't want that. So in those situations, let's take this out. In those situations, I'd recommend leaving the volume on the folder track at zero. Don't readjust it. Just use the mute or the solo or some effects. But if we want to adjust the level of our drums, just select them all, either as a temporary group or later, I'll show you how to create custom groups and adjust the overall volume of the drums right from here. They're all going to move together instead of doing it from here. Because if we adjust it here and our effect sends a post fader, it's all going to be adjusted. So the drum reverb will match the drum level as we adjust this. Now, there's one other thing I should mention. Let's go back to the first project. When using folder tracks, we can put audio, MIDI, or even video on the folder track, like this. Now, the kick is on the child track and it's on the folder. But I don't recommend doing that because this fader will now control the kick and the drums at the same time, which can be kind of confusing. To make it easier and more organized, I recommend not putting media on the folder tracks and just using them for combining tracks. So, anyway, that's folders in Reaper. Let's move on. Oh!